a list of the greatest Australian TV shows of all time. And in full disclosure, awfully sorry, but you know we can't include Sunrise. It's way too OP. Sunrise is S rank. That's where the S comes from. Sunrise rank. If it was an Olympics contender to put every other contestant in the Paralympics, that's how hard it crushes. So, disqualified before we even begin the list. Having said that, let's go. Number 10 is a tie between Blue Healers and All Saints because it was the exact same show. They just got the script, crossed out every time they mentioned hospital and wrote police station. The same guy was the head of both institutions. John Howard and John Wood are the same person. Change my mind. They both had extremely successful acting careers for being able to do this better than anyone else in the country. <sighs> what the f***? And for mastering what old Australian men are already masters at, which is looking exasperated and hurling insults, a solid, commendable number 10. Talk about earning your keep. Number 9, Sea Change. Now that's gone down 7 places because of Channel 9's recommissioning of it, but it's still up there because of that dreamy diver Dan. Oh. Making every mum in Australia mumble. Ooh, I wish my husband was like diver Dan. But he's only been diving a handful of times. Though his name is Dan. So when I do scream, oh, Dan, in the boudoir, it's not suspect at all. That's why Sea Change is still on this list, because it made your mum moist. That's right, I'm going to say it again, because I know you love to hear it. It made your mum moist. Number eight. Round the twist, it was Sea Change for kids, because boys, come on, as if you didn't get a hard-on for the sister in year four. There's only two pieces of filming art in history, Holy Mountain and Round the Twist, that deserve this review. Beyond Critique. How did a show that made Fantastic Planet look like an episode of According to Jim become the voice of a generation? We did like boogers. How did they know? Number seven, Rove Live, and it would be much higher up if it wasn't for Rove. And you know who knows that more than anyone else in the country? Rove. Dude, I like Rove. Yeah, see? Matt likes Rove more than Rove. It was on during the early days of social media. Remember that? When Rove Live was the closest thing you'd seen to Live League? It was badass. It was on at 9.30. It was rated M because it was live and you never knew what they were going to say. Oh, sometimes they drop the F-bomb. Very rarely. But that made it even juicier. Featured Australia's freshest, edgiest young comedian, Peter Hellier. And think about some of those gem iconic segments they had. What the? Husey loses at Kevin Rudd PM sex office. Tom Petrovsky at Comset. Harry Bickmore's news updates at... Oh, sorry, this is supposed to be a list of iconic segments. Hamish and Andy's ghosting. The list goes on and on if you just include Ryan Shelton's ideas and then finish the list. But still, what a list. You could make a list ranking Rove Live segments, and you know I will in the future because I'm obsessed with dated Aussie shows. R.I.P. David Tench. Number six. Number five, deal or no deal, and don't you roll your eyes because as soon as your parents switched over to that, you watched the whole thing. Oh, the 200's gonna be in 17, are you? Like you, you, you got lucky every 50 episodes. That show was the original Max Mofo opening Pokemon cards. 10 years of non-stop suspense. Take that, 24. Think about the Jesus-level sacrifice Andrew O'Keefe made for the rest of us. That was the simplest show on earth. Booyah, 26! But he stayed perpetually bored, so the rest of us remained mildly entertained. Where's his CBD statue? Lest we forget. <sighs> The chase isn't quite as good. Number four, Good Morning Australia with Bert Newton, because damn it, he did what he could with dead air and proved to us all that you can in fact polish a turd. You can make a show that relies on interviewing Australian Idol runner-ups interesting, even if you're surrounded by 10 minute ads for magnet mattresses and pants. He was such a pro that in 13 years, he never once had to bust out his A material, which was a sparkly tux he used to wear in the 70s, because if he shot by even a molecule more, he would have destroyed the camera equipment. I remember when he was getting axed and those infomercials were pre-filmed, he said to the camera, and now it's time for a message from yet another one of our trained seals. It then cuts to a woman saying, thanks Bert, do you find it hard to sleep? Maybe it's because your mattress doesn't have magnets. What an absolute king. More Bert Newtons, less Joe Hildebrands, it'd solve 80% of the world's problems. Number three. 
stooged. Remember when Millsy was the biggest celebrity in Australia because he may have finger blasted Paris Hilton? He had so many unmemorable chances on television and the least memorable of all was stooged. It was back when Ashton Kutcher's punk was huge and so Channel 10 thought they could change the name and no one would notice. Unfortunately, people did. How fast that show was cancelled was the closest human beings have ever gotten to breaking the speed of light. It lasted two episodes max. Clearly Channel 10 is involved in this huge international cover-up with Google because the show's been almost wiped from memory. There's just little scraps of it here and there on the net and that's why it's number three. Hidden in this list, just in case Channel 10 succeeds in wiping it from history, if you have a videotape of Stooge, send it this way. They're not going to get away with this. Because if Sea Change deserves a reboot, why not Stooge with the original cast? Millsy, you already pulled this prank on me. I'm not falling for it again. Stooge! Number two, Beauty and the Beast. And I mean the real Beauty and the Beast. None of that Disney crap. The show that was on at 1pm on Channel 10 every weekday where all their good programs are hidden. Perfection. The show's host was like if Joe Hildebrand wasn't a cuck. Stands of Marduk battling four harpies every day yelling, Jane, Jane, shut up. How would you know about life in rural Australia? You live in bloody Byron Bay with all those hippies smoking wacky tobacco. No, no, don't try and pull the wool over my eyes. I know what's going on up there. That show shaped me. I chucked many a sickie from school to watch it because it was my school. I learned everything I need to know about the adult world from Stan Zamanik and Jan Murray. I am their unholy love child as that show should have just been called You're watching Talkback Radio, the show. And Lisa Wilkinson used to be on it with the same worthless opinions, but instead of being celebrated for them like she is now, there was Stan there to check her saying, Lisa, you silly hippie. You are what's wrong with Australia today. And he was right. So rest in peace, Stan Zamanik, you fat ugly fuck. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. Finally, number one, and I'm dead serious when I say this, the block. No, no, it's actually Plasmo. But seriously, Plasmo. Sorry to sound like a BuzzFeed journalist, but remember him? Blogger Jackson Chu summed it up best when he said, How can so much drama, selflessness, a beautiful soundtrack, poignancy, and a silly bit of humor be packed into four minutes and 37 seconds of clan animation? It was an emotional roller coaster that twisted and turned with every sentence. I miss our home planet, Pasty. Oh, Plasmo. Shut up, Plasmo! I don't care about your home planet at all, and I'm glad you're stranded. <laughs> Pasty, I make some cookies. <laughs> he does have a lisp. I'm so happy it was Australian because it showed what Aussies can do on a budget, but I'm also sad it was Australian because it shows what happens to Aussies on a budget. They get cancelled because Screen Australia realises after a season, hey, there was no middle-aged women at all drinking wine in this. It's a crime that show didn't get a second season, but all 13 episodes are available on YouTube now. Just go watch them. Do yourself a favour. It is the height of Australian content. You will have an existential crisis while laughing. I've never done acid, but I'm calling it now. Plasmo's better. I know a lot of these lists are stupid and tongue in cheek, but not Plasmo. I genuinely think it's incredible. It is my mission in life to get a second season of Plasmo green lighted, so just like Sea Change, it can be permanently tarnished. Anyway, like this video more than Stan Zamanik likes saying, shut up. And he really, really liked saying shut up. Please share and comment below. Come in.